don't know what you felt when you heard that song. Maybe uh, dance pop isn't your thing. Maybe you're more into jazz or hip hop or rock. But maybe, maybe what you really like is music and feeling deeply emotional about music. I know I certainly do. Now, what if I told you that the song you just heard was written by artificial intelligence? Would it change the way you feel about it? Would it, would it make you like it less? Well, whether you like it or not, it's no secret that AI is starting to have an effect on the music industry. Uh, only last year, a band known as Yacht was nominated for a Grammy Award for a, an album composed with the assistance of artificial intelligence. And the song you just heard, Beautiful the World, won the very first Eurovision AI song contest last year. So, what's so wrong about using AI in, in music? Well, I'm Charlton and this is Justin. I'm gonna take you on a journey into the world of artificial intelligence and music and let you decide. When I think about my very early days uh, at loving entertaining and storytelling, it's led me to a life of acting and music and poetry and songwriting, I guess I felt like I've been a, a, a creative human who's been looking to share an emotional experience with other humans. Well, I'm, you know, I'm down with emotion as well. I, uh, I was trained as a classical pianist, uh, so I know all about emotion and music, but when I found out that I had perfect pitch, which is the ability to hear frequencies very accurately in my, in my head, uh, I became obsessed with mapping music and, and uh, getting that music out of my brain in a way that didn't involve keyboards. Uh, I wanted to invent a machine that uh, could, like Christopher Walken in the movie Brainstorm, that could uh, uh, play back and, and record emotional experiences and perhaps even listen to those melodies that were in my head and get them out into reality. When I first met Justin, uh, at first I was skeptical, to be honest, in terms of the ability of computer-aided music to generate that, that deep feeling that I was pursuing as a somewhat purist balladeer. You know, some of his uh, cyber dreams of uploading his musical consciousness to the cloud or, or that one day we're all going to have a chip in our head that tracks the music that we're listening to. It gave me visions of Terminator robots that are just mowing down a sea of composers. But it, it did get me thinking that could artificial intelligence truly be a musical collaborator? Well, I, for one, welcome our robot overlords. Um, but I, too, became interested in, in, in working with them in a more friendly way. You know, could, we, could the AI be a, a collaborator, a band member, perhaps, and, and work with, together with artists and producers? So when we did the Eurovision AI Song Contest, uh, Beautiful World track, we, uh, we analysed all the lyrics of the winning Eurovision songs and all the melodies of the winning Eurovision songs, and then we used another algorithm to put those two things together. And we started listening to the outputs uh, that came from this, uh, this neural net. And some of them, I'll be honest, were pretty bad. Some of them were completely bonkers. And some of them were surprisingly good. And the surprisingly good ones were the ones that kind of piqued our interest because it, it was like we'd almost invented some kind of a happy accident machine. It was, it was creating these, these, these sparks of music that, that really gave us a dopamine hit. And it reminded me of when I was in, in the studio working with artists in, in the booth and they were jamming along and suddenly this idea just comes out of the air and you go, that's, that's the idea, that's the idea that's going to be the song. And that's very true. And, and as I worked with the AI, I realised that it could integrate into the traditional process of, of songwriting and, and production. And, and it was far less threatening than I actually thought it was. And in fact, it was really exciting. It was as though we were scratching the surface of stimulating creativity in ourselves in a way that many musicians hadn't experienced before. And I started thinking, maybe AI could help an emerging artist find their true voice. Maybe AI could help an established artist to appraise their body of work and then come up with inspiration for a new album. And just maybe AI could help a music artist's soul live on forever, writing songs long after they're gone. <laughs> I love that idea. I love that idea. Imagine the time saved by listening to an entire artist's back catalogue, say Elton John. It's 50 years of work. Um, I mean, what a time saver. Overnight we could do that. <laughs> so. We did that last night. <laughs> we ran Elton John's uh, 50 years of, of music through an AI system and uh, wanted to play you today some of the uh, things we managed to tease out of the AI, some of the raw outputs. Um, take a listen. We've got our artificially generated Elton up there just to sort of give us some ideas. You want you. 
Sounds like Elton. That's the chords. Cool. Oh, that's good. That's a pretty cool, pretty cool little hook. Can you play that melody again? So we've got, a, we've got that. And the, the AI isn't really speaking. It's sort of coming up with syllables and ideas. But to me, it sounded like love is high as gold. So put that together. It's like, love is high as gold. Oh, I think we're onto something here, ladies and gentlemen. So I'd like to release this and we're going to call it Not La John. <laughs> so I'll leave that one with you. Just think about that for a second. But uh, so what's really exciting is that it's not dissimilar to the way in which a, a, a human composer would be inspired by Elton John's work and then start to write their own work. But the difference here is that uh, uh, the, the, it's been spawned from the data of, of uh, the creative life's work of Elton John, which confuses me a little bit, because who wrote the song, and then who owns the song, and then what does that mean for traditional notions of music, copyright and publishing and record labels, and I can hear the, the, the lawyers screaming at us now, Justin. <laughs> well, history has shown us that when music and technology get together, there are some complex hurdles to overcome. I mean, there was an incident in the 80s where uh, they wanted to ban synthesizers <laughs> because uh, of the work that it would uh, take away from real musicians. Um, but I'm super glad that didn't happen because there wouldn't have been any Depeche Mode. Yeah, well, that would, that would have been a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I can see, I, I guess, that uh, AI is quite good at uh, little sparks, seeds, inspiration. But what about, you know, songwriting and, and, and song structure and the true storytelling imbued in a great song? Well, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Mimu, which is an AI-powered generative music system that is able to take... It's a combination of my well, last decade's worth of thinking on this, on this subject, I would say. Um, but it's able to take inputs like Elton John's vocal you just heard, and along with contributions from artists, it's able to select and remix and create musical structure around these simple seed ideas. And when we were working with this system to begin with, we realised that it was mimicking the key creative processes that our brains sort of undergo when we're writing in songwriting, songwriting mode in the studio. Um, and we realised it could be a very powerful tool for collaboration between artists and producers. Um, so, have a listen to what Mimu did when we started playing a little bit of Elton John to it after we analysed some of the key things about it, tempo, melody, structure. Okay, so it's giving me a bit of a section to work on, yeah. Pretty sci-fi at the end there, but hey. Um, so what if we took Elton's vocal and then we added it to a human jamming session and the Mimu output and combine them all together? What, what do we get then? <clears throat> It's a hit, it's a hit, I love it. What gets me excited about that is when you're mapping music like that and you've got those parameters of, uh, of tempo and pitch, and then if you can manipulate those with everyday variables like, uh, like temperature and uh, GPS location and time of day, my heartbeat, and yes, Justin, even your brain waves, then I guess we're, we're getting to a place where it is possible to use artificial intelligence to create real-time, emotional environments, which surely can only bring the, the artist closer to the listener. And I guess that's what I've been pursuing all the way along. So you were talking about a computer intelligence that translates emotion into music? That's what I've been working on all along. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and I'm at TEDx and I'm playing AI music. I think Justin's already put a chip in my head. <laughs> so what we've discovered is Right now, it is possible for artists and producers to collaborate together 
with the help of AI and overcome complex creative hurdles and at the same time achieve incredible, amazing, creative, surprising outcomes. But of course, it's the use of those powerful tools to tell true human emotional stories that really matters. <laughs> so what have you learned, Justin? We've learned to call this process of using artificial intelligence in music augmented creativity. And I've learned that beyond the guitar and a penned word on the page, that artificial intelligence truly has the ability to sustain and further a music artist's career. So now, rather than rage against the machine, we can, we can rage with the machine. <laughs> huh? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and let's play some music. <laughs> Beautiful the world 